We are recording. Right, morning guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat number six. Six. It's number six, six now. Um, and today we have Rickson with us and he is going to be giving us some pointers for the title Networking Whilst Not Working. Uh, basing it all around running and training. Uh, I don't want to ruin it because the stuff that he sent us is sounds incredible. So I'm just going to pass over to him. He's going to do the talking and then we can do some questions and stuff afterwards. Um, but here he is, Rickson. Desuda. Morning, guys. Good morning, morning. So there's, uh, I'm going to keep this uh, as casual as uh, I possibly can. Otherwise, I'd be dressed up in a suit for this, which is you know, <laughs> unheard of as well. I'm going to share a screen with you right now. There are just some pointers and just some tips. I will talk through the whole thing and uh, maybe get into a little more detailed question and answer situation after that, yeah? So let me know if you guys can see this now. Could you guys see my screen? Perfect, mate, yep. All right, perfect. So um, I've been, a little bit of history on me, I've been in the life insurance and the financial services business now for maybe 21 years. And um, traditionally when I uh, was introduced to networking per se, it was uh, with the intention of uh, just working in business and revenue and commissions. And that's really what I thought it was for the longest time. Um, but over a period of time, that thought process has evolved and I think about life as a whole. And I think with uh, every individual that you interact with, there's something that you can pick up and learn from them and you can add as value to your life. Um, so today I don't look at networking from the perspective of just uh, work. Um, it is just picking up life hacks and some tools and some tips from people who are doing things that you want to do better than you are. So running fits in really easily. Uh, a few things uh, that I've kept in mind. Uh, one is I try and understand what is the purpose behind me wanting to meet somebody or run with them, train with them. Uh, is it fitness related? Is, are they some, is there something that they're doing fitness wise which can make me better? Is it family or personal related? I'm a father of two children and married and uh, been in Dubai for the last uh, 40 years. I don't necessarily only have requirements around the fitness and the business side. Sometimes I'm trying to understand things around the kids and uh, how to react to specific situations. And I might have a role model who's a parent that I'd like to talk to about that. And that may be the reason to uh, just have a run with them and a chat with them. Um, or it could be work related. This is the most common thing, isn't it? Uh, is I have a business need that needs to be fulfilled. I know somebody in my network that can help me with that and what other ways that I can meet up with them. The traditional way in my industry is to show up at a golf course or meet up in a coffee shop or in a restaurant. And I think it may be overdone, maybe overplayed and people are usually, uh, have got a defense mechanism around them, but put them in a natural environment in activities that they enjoy doing and trust is established almost uh, instantly. So if, even if it's work related, but the key thing out here is to understand why. What is the purpose that you want to be around somebody or run with them? Um, what do you want from this, right? And what can you offer back in return? Is there something that they need or that you can share with them that you can help with? And it doesn't just have to be material. I mean, like I said, it could be uh, tips of things that you're doing that can help somebody else get better. I'll share some examples of this as we go along and we can have all the questions answered as well in the, at the end of this, yeah? Um, think about creating value. Um, I was part of a professional networking group called BNI. Um, Marcus called it uh, uh, speed dating. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing about uh, BNI is they actually, while the whole organization may work for somebody, may not work for somebody, the interesting concept that they have in BNI is giver's gain, right? The whole idea behind approaching a situation not with a mindset of what am I going to get from it, but with their mindset of what can I give to the situation? What can I add to the situation? So we were actually trained and coached over a period of time to constantly ask how we can help somebody else rather than how they can add value to me. So this is something which I've taken, uh, I'm no longer associated with BNI in any form or way, but those are the takeaways I got from there that I use in my life. 
every day. If I get into a conversation with somebody today, the first thing on my mind is not, hey, how can I gain something out of this? But my thought process is if I can add value, I'm sure at some point people will ask you back, how can I add value to you, right? So this is really simple. Um, and can they make you, are you, can you think of a way to create value in somebody else's life, right? Can they make you better at life? And then can you make them better at life in any form or way? Again, doesn't have to be uh, related to commercials or finances or what you will earn out of it. It could just be life hacks. Uh, it could be tips. One thing that I um, uh, realized a little late in the game is you need to make it about them. It cannot always be, hey, this is me, this is me, look what I did. I don't get along with people like that. I can't hang around people like that. They really do my head in. And I can't imagine too many people who appreciate people like that either. So you need to make it about them. And one key factor out here with any of these uh, uh, networking practices per se is trust. Trust is a big thing. And trust evolves over a period of time. It's not something that just, uh, you meet someone for the first time, you trust them entirely, you do everything with them. The reality is if you think about our community, uh, we're training, we're on chats on a regular basis, we're, you know, we're encouraging each other to get better. Over a period of time, we've spent, I've known some of you guys for years now, maybe three, four, five, some people for six years now. And trust over a period of time has been established. So trust is a big factor out here. Don't expect something in return unless you can build trust on that, right? Another key thing is a lot of us shy away from doing this. We probably don't share our goals as often as we should, but this is a big thing. Um, a takeaway from me years ago from a pretty cheesy book called The Secret was put out all your uh, goals and all your wants and everything that you need out into the universe and the universe will find a way to make it happen. But you know, I've become a big believer of this. And today, if I have a goal in mind, I share it out loud. I tell the whole world. And the reason behind that is I find that everyone you know probably has some information, some resource that they can share with you that can take you towards the goal. But if we keep that inside and if we don't talk about it, then it's unlikely that they even know that this is your requirement and that they'll be able to share that with you. I think most people want to help somebody else out. It's a normal uh, intrinsic uh, nature of people. But I think the key thing over there is to bring it out, share it, also ask somebody else what their goals are. And running in a 45 minute zone two or a one hour zone two run conversation pace is the best time to do this stuff, right? Um, it's a good time to bounce off ideas of people. I have friends that I run with often. We know the brown zone. It's a new CrossFit zone. But these guys, I, when I run with them, you know, it's amazing. I have things that I need to bounce off them, whether it's business related, whether it's family related. And I find that's the perfect time for me to ask them, you know, hey, listen, what do you think of this? What about this idea? What about that book? And I get great feedback from there. And it's all when we're actually in the middle of a run. You know, it's, uh, we're in our comfort zone, so to speak. We're trying to get better. We're encouraging each other. It's a great time to have um, these ideas bounce off people. Great minds think alike. Uh, there's, a, there's, an, there's an addition to this. Fools seldom differ, right? But you probably have a lot more in common with your running crew uh, and your community than just running. I'll give you an example of this guy. Uh, Z, he's not a client of mine, but he's somebody that I've done about 15 or 20 runs with over the last uh, year and a half or so. He's an absolute right fit client for me. I mean, if I think commercially, he'd be the perfect person for me to work with. We get along, we have kids the same age. He's, you know, he's in the zone that I want to work with. But you know what? He had everything that I could offer sorted out for him. So there was absolutely no room for me to transact with business with a guy. But over the period of the years, over the period of the months that we planned and trained together, he got to know so much more about me as a person that today he's become one of the most fierce advocates for me and my business, um, you know, to his entire network. I didn't ask for it. I didn't even ask him for his business, but he's just been that person that's constantly been pushing clients to me on a regular basis. 
And to think all of this came from just getting out in the morning and going for a 5 a.m. run with the guy. Um, another thing I think is important with this is share your resources, right? Uh, have an abundance mindset. There are things in our lives that we may not have a need for anymore, whether they are, whether it's technology, whether it's books, whether it's gadgets, whether it's people, whether it's networks that we have access to that maybe are underutilized or could be of help to somebody else. And if you know there's someone that needs that, uh, you know, it's easy to just share and it goes back to giver's gain. It will come back to you in some form of way. They will feel the urge to repay that favor to you in some form of way. Not to say that we have to expect it, but it could just be, it, it would just happen just because that's just the nature of people, right? And sometimes not having a personal agenda is amazing. Get out there with a bunch of people that you know and run. And sometimes the conversations that come out of that are just amazing and they just drive you. I'll give you an example of this. Uh, I remember uh, a few months before I took up uh, triathlon running, I went up, uh, triathlon training, I went up on a um, run to Shauka, I believe, and I ended up running with Rob Jones. And uh, I did, here's something I didn't know about him. Uh, he did an Ironman and then he told me the reasons why he didn't want to go down that path and he was uh, focusing on running. But I got so many tips from the guy about uh, triathlon training and it wasn't even the seed planted in my head at the time that I was surely going to go and do this. It was just a thought process, but it was amazing. And I just got that in a, what, 30, 35 minutes that we spent together on that run that day. It was just amazing. There was, I didn't get into it with a mindset of, hey, I'm going to go and talk to Rob. I'm going to have a chat with him about triathlon training and get his thoughts and insights on this. But it just happened and it was amazing. So sometimes not even having an agenda, but finding it along the way by just asking the right questions can be just super powerful. Um, I have a couple of questions to address over here. Um, Rob, do you want to ask me the question or should I just take it from you? Should I just continue with this? Okay, so I'm gonna go for it. I was gonna say, um, if well, what's the most valuable thing or the best thing that you think you've learned from someone when you've been on a on a run or a not working run, as you're <laughs> as you're calling the presentation? Uh, actually, this is really interesting. Last year at MDS, uh, day three was the day that I decided to take uh, really slow. I didn't want to run through it. I was conscious of the fact that I had a long day the next day, and I was. I ran the first 10 or 15 kilometers and then I started walking and I came upon this uh, woman by the name uh, Kerry and we ended up spending the next six hours of the day together. And in those six hours, I learned about this phenomenal story behind her. And she is a mother of four children. Um, she and her husband were corporate people. They decided to give it all up and uh, leave and sail around the world for a whole year with their four daughters that they pulled out of school during which time she decided to set up a um, juicing business called Naughty and Nice, right? The story was amazing for me because at that point I was battling in my head about the various uh, education systems that exist and whether homeschooling is right. And she had kids of various ages. And for the next six hours, the stuff that she shared with me was just amazing. It had a crazy impact on my mind. And I thought through it the following day uh, which was a long day for me at MBS. And I just talked through that entire conversation that I had with her. And there was so much of clarity around what was really important for me in my life and my children versus what the masses and the world is telling us to do. It was just an amazing uh, takeaway. And, and I think um, that relationship, that I met her that one day, and that relationship has uh, stayed on. It's been a year since MBS and we're in touch with each other almost every single day. Over a period of this time, I've managed to share with her some resources to bring her business to Dubai. She shared with me tips and ideas on things that, you know, just came up. It's from six hours spent with one person on a, uh, on a day out of the desert. So that has been one of my most memorable uh, conversations, I'd say. Um, yeah, uh, there are a couple of questions that uh, you guys have asked me uh, to address. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you all about this very quickly before we go into any questions from the, uh, the guys. So one of, those, one of the things that was asked to me was how has my network uh, grown through running? Um, and 
and I think a lot of you guys know that my, you know, my, my fitness and running bit began from um, morbid obesity to, to this. But I think over a period of time, what's happened is also because of the day and age we live in and the fact that we have so much, uh, so many mediums available for us to share our story, a lot of people reached out to me, you know, both physically and as well as on social media platforms. And relationships began to uh, develop as a result of it, yeah. Um, what I've noticed is uh, some of these relationships have turned into business. Some of them have turned into social relationships. A lot of them have uh, turned into a combination of both, really. And it, begins, it began on a run, maybe, at a CrossFit gym. We, we, we spoke about a 1,000 burpees. Uh, I remember when I did the 1,000 burpees, I did it with Yusuf uh, Tukan and Hanan Webby from uh, the gym. And when I began on the MDS journey, Yusuf was leaving town, and he ended up giving me his CrossFit vest as a way for me to train with. And given we're in COVID times today, I, did ha I had access to very few bits of uh, equipment. I use that vest a lot right now. And this came from a training session with Yusuf back in the day. I still wear the Yusuf tag of it when I, when I train with it, which is confusing for a lot of people. But uh, um, <laughs> the other thing I've noticed is um, lots of positive energy gets uh, transferred. You know, um, when, you, when you're with somebody and if you're seeking it then, and you ask the right questions, you can transfer a lot of positive energy back to you and back and forth. Huh? This makes a huge difference to me uh, on a regular basis. I'll give you one example of something that happened last year. I got a call from a friend who said he needed me to meet up with somebody on a specific day because this was the only day this guy was available. But TP said that I had 30 kilometers to do that day. And the only way I could fit this in is if I went and met him soon after my run in my sweaty running gear. That was the only way I could fit this in. I actually told him that. I said, listen, the only way this can happen is if I see you at Organic Cafe because I'll make it part of my run and I'll show up there in my uh, sweaty shorts. Are you okay with that? And he said, yeah, yeah, don't worry, let's do it. So to give you an idea, it takes normally between three to four meetings for me business-wise, to transact with somebody at least three or four times. Um, this guy and me got into a conversation. It was the weirdest uh, meeting setup I've ever been in my life. I was sweating. People were staring at me at Organic Cafe while I was trying to have a conversation with this guy. And uh, we finished our business meeting and we transacted over a period of just uh, two meetings. It was one of my most fruitful uh, sessions of the year. And what came out of it was he actually wanted to meet me because of, uh, because he had taken a sabbatical from training and working out and got into a negative spiral and started putting on weight and wanted to get back into training. And to be able to do that and get my thoughts and my mindset on everything, he was happy to conduct his business activities with with me because I was offering those services as well. I mean, today, a year and a half in, we share a very deep relationship and we call on each other often to bounce ideas off each other. And like, happy to say, he's moved on and he's uh, basically become physically fit and you know, focusing on his training. And, and he's a big role model for me as a parent and as a business owner. And I pick up so much from him. But it's amazing how it came out of a conversation around or how it began from running. Right. Um, I'll talk to you about why networking works. Okay. I mean, my mindset on this is as human beings, we've got this uh, need almost, or we were born to communicate and interact. We're social beings, most of us, which is why given this COVID uh, uh, situation today, we see a lot of people reconnecting with people over Zoom. You see in so many, or I, I've seen it in my group where uh, buddies of mine from school from 20, 25 years ago are saying, let's all get together on a call and suddenly there are 80 people on a call together and we haven't done this in what, 15 years, 20 years. So we're social beings. There is a need for us to communicate. It comes natural to most of us, right? At this point in time, what we're doing our networking per se, uh, we're sharing ideas and philosophies with, with constant contact with people. And I think I've realized over the years that I, I try not to be the smartest person in the room. And the whole point behind this is to find an uncomfortable environment or a skill or something that you want to learn and grow um, and find a way to basically 
be that, put yourself in that room where you're learning from a lot of people, right? And for me, the only way to do that is find a difficult goal. I put myself in a situation where I'm now learning from absolutely everyone. So for me, networking is that, is going out and meeting people, uh, learning from them about things that I want to get better at or I have no clue about, right? And the advantage I think with, in our community per se, is that because we see each other on a, on a regular basis, the trust to open up a little bit more than you would with an absolute stranger and share your goals and your dreams, your desires is, a, is more, right? It's easier to do that. Um, what else can I talk about? Um, one more uh, example of uh, networking that made a huge difference to me from a running perspective. I ran into somebody or I shared a tent with somebody at the first MDS, the guy called Patrick Cantong from uh, Vancouver. Asian descent and the guy's story was amazing because I was thinking about, wow, everyone over here were elite runners and, and this guy was finishing really up there in the top 100 every time. And, I, and he shared with me a story about how he began his runs a couple of years ago by doing the Disneyland Marathon. So his family, he and his kids and his wife went to Disneyland or Disney World and there was a marathon taking place and somebody backed out. So he put somebody else's bib and stuck it on him and he decided, you know what, let's try this out and he ran. And he said he finished really far out of the back. But our conversations that evolved from that, it's been two, uh, three years now since I met him. And, and you know, the impact that he left on my mind about where you can begin with it, where you can end up. I mean, the guy is running uh, ultra, ultra trails all over the place right now. He manages, he takes care of his family, he's got a business, he's become a huge role model in my life. And again, we've been in touch with each other on a regular basis and constantly bouncing ideas of each other. So I don't want to call it the traditional networking because that puts a lot of business connotation, a lot of, uh, maybe a lot of pressure for you to get something out of it uh, financially, um, you know, but if you think about it from a different perspective, if you think about it from the perspective of overall growth and gain, then networking is really simple. It's just two people or three people or a group of people getting together and sharing ideas and sharing resources. And I don't think any one of us have got 20 minute runs. So we've got 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, run with somebody, get to know a little bit about them and just grow. Uh, and this has basically uh, been me for the last uh, three to four years now, before which it was all about business, networking for business. That's it, that's me. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, I actually, I remember, whilst you were saying that, I remember the very first time, I think it must be either the very first time or maybe the second or third time I actually met Tom Otten. Um, and it was in Rack at Cat Springs. And we were doing the, the two hour loop. If loads of people know it, you know, it's six and a half K of up and six and a half K of down. And it's still, I remember most of the conversation that we had, even though that was three, four, maybe even five years ago. And it's just still in my head because I was first time I'd spoken to this guy properly and I was just blown away. I just spent most of the time just listening as he just told me about media, the jobs he was doing, his goals, why he runs, everything. And I was just like, wow, this guy is, this guy is cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just like, <laughs> and it was not planned at all. We just happened to bump into each other at the same time on the trail. And we were training, um, yeah. And my mind was blown and it just came from uh, just random, random sort of meat, if you like. But I had so many takeaways from that. It was almost like a counseling session with, with Tom Watson. Um, so many takeaways from that that I still remember today. Yeah. I think there I think... are some questions here. Are there anything that you want me to address? Uh, yeah. Jeff's got a question on business. Jeff's got a question, yeah. So Jeff's question, is, yeah, go Jeff's question is, has your business ever struggled and what parallels have you drawn from running? My, my business actually did a lot better as a result of running. And I think the, the reason for that has to do more with the fact that I condensed a lot more work in fewer hours. I actually um, used to work about 14 hours a day, six days a week 
while I was uh, that guy. Um, and over a period of time, when I fit in more training and decided to take on the big runs that required big blocks of training, I realized that I needed more time. The purpose behind it was to replace work hours with something else. So I found the activity that I wanted to replace work hours with. And to be fair, the focus has been more clearer. So I feel that I require fewer hours a week now to transact with, to make business work out for me, right? I, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually experimenting with a three-day work week right now. I successfully managed a four-day work week for the last uh, two years. And right now I'm in a space of experimenting with three days a week of working. And to be honest, my, my business has only done better as a result of blocking out days for the family and training and things like that. So it's not, it hasn't been negatively affected. If anything, it's been a lot, a lot more positive. I mean, there are two ways to look at it, right? One is that you increased your business levels revenue. Uh, and the other way of looking at growth is, have you reduced the time spent to make the same amount of revenue? So I look at it from both perspectives. I find that there's more quality and less the time spent to get to the same point. Um, so yeah, it's been, a, it's been positive. It's been a positive impact. I have a question that's non-business related. Do you, when you started identifying that networking was good <laughs> Um, you're getting positive benefits. Did you plan more social networking into your day or did you just let it happen naturally? It's a combination of both, uh, Rob, because um, there, are, there are specific things that I would plan and put myself, put myself in a situation that I am comfortable or good at that. Um, so I love hosting people. Um, I love doing that because I feel like I'm in my natural zone, right? Um, so for me, I would organize get togethers with people, but the whole point behind that would not necessarily have to be around let's network for business, but it was more around let's put people with similar mindsets in the same room and let's see what comes off it, right? Uh, sometimes there are ideas that just get bounced around where without even needing to ask your question, you just got all the answers from the conversation around the dinner table or, you know, on a run or whatever else the case may be. And um, so, yes, I'd say some of them are structured and planned, uh, but the structuring and planning part of it had to do, has to do more with not planning the event around it, but planning the people who should be uh, together in the same room because the mindsets make a difference, right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't go into uh, structuring it in a manner where I know every single event that's going to take place as a, you know, at that point in time, no. It's just put the people in and let the conversation flow. And maybe, maybe there are some questions that you can prep in advance uh, to encourage people to share or open up a little bit more. That's something that certainly helps. Yeah, I was going to say, when Rob was talking about meeting Tom Otten, it seemed like a very natural way to start and it's very spontaneous. So two people with a, a similar mindset just started speaking. And I was wondering, do you feel that if, if you go into a situation, so planning, is it more around, the, as, it, as you just said, it's more around the people. If you were to set a directive or a, an agenda for that run, do you think that would take away from the organicness of the situation? I think it would. I think it would. Um, but you know, the thing is, so uh, at every, I don't know about... Uh, you specifically, but I know for me, for example, at every, every single day or every part of my life, there are questions which are unanswered, right? It may be different today than what it is tomorrow, but I don't know that the person next to me doesn't have the answer for it. So there's no harm in me asking the question. If I'm struggling with something specifically, because I remember uh, uh, Z, the person I mentioned earlier, I remember when I did one run with him, I asked him about how do I, how do I get my kids to switch over from being entitled, you know, to earning their keep given the times and everything else. And he suggested an app to me. I just asked him as a father, because he's a father as well. And I said, listen, what do you do? And he said, you know what? There's this fantastic app. And he showed me this whole thing where you can credit money to their account. Uh, technically it's, you know, I, he basically explained the whole thing to me. And at the end of that 45 minute run, I was thinking, this is fantastic. And we, over the, this COVID period, for example, we found a way to 
incentivize the kids and make them more uh, financially, you know, uh, responsible. And, and these are things that came out of a conversation. It was something which was bothering me. And I asked him and he had the answer. He may have not had the answer for this, but he may have yeah. an opinion or he may have had a, a situation similar to this that he was struggling with. I don't know, but there's no harm in asking. You never know uh, who has the answer for this. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, we've got a few more questions. So what's one from Lizzie said, whilst we can't run with people, are you doing zoom workouts uh, to network? <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not, Lizzie, because it's not my, um, I don't think it's an area that I can add value. Uh, I've, had a, I've had a couple of friends reach out to me and ask me, hey, can you organize something for a bunch of us together? But I don't feel it's something that I can do today, right now. My mind space is somewhere else. But on the flip side, I know um, a friend of mine who is a teacher at the school, and she's a fitness coach as well. And she's got all the moms together and she's doing sessions for them at three o'clock in the afternoon, but this is her strength. This is what she does well. What I've been doing instead, for me, what, is, uh, what I think is my calling and, and where I can create a bigger impact is to educate the masses on how to be around their finances. So what I've taken uh, with Zoom today is I've reached out to various organizations and said, listen, no money on the table, do you have a group of people that need more clarity on how to manage their finances? And they said, yes, we are coached. We've got different layers, great. So I'm happy to have a one hour conversation with them and give them tips and tools and tricks that they can use. Because in my head, I'm thinking today, through this platform, I can reach up to 100 people at one go. So the impact is greater. If my strength was around structuring workouts, then I would find a way to create impact using that. Uh, so each of us may have our own strengths and maybe we could use uh, that technology to network and probably create impact in that, in that form better. That's cool. And then um, I think that's pretty much solidly answered that question. The next question is from Andrew Winter who says, what's the next situation you plan to put yourself in uh, where you can learn from others? And then the next following question from that is anything big question mark. I have uh, taken on, so I've put myself in a lot of physical situations to get better at life. And I realized over the last three years, one of the um, aha moments was that maybe I'm not pushing myself uh, intellectually. And I've always struggled with accents. Uh, uh, understanding people with accent. And it could be English, Scottish as well. It's not that it's just, so, uh, but, so one of the things that my wife has always uh, told me is, listen, man, you, you don't have a year for accent. You absolutely understand the, the, the wrong thing that people are trying to say. So one of the things I put out as a challenge that I want to learn is uh, languages. So uh, that's a book which is on my table right now. I didn't know this question was coming, but that's uh, learn Spanish. Uh, it's something which is mm -hmm. important for me right now because I'm thinking about uh, it's, not, it's not natural for me to pick this up. This is uncomfortable for me. But when I put it out, incidentally, to the point of networking and stuff, when I put it out, you'd be surprised how many people from Inner Fight reached out to me and offered me help on learning Spanish. That's amazing. amazing. So I just put it out there as one of my stories. And Adriano, for example, reached out to me and said, I can help you out. So I need people who can have that conversation with me. So this is my, Andrew, to answer your question, that's my... Uh, difficult situation right now. Uh, the goal I've associated with it is by the end of the year to either have a Zoom call or a direct um, um, meeting or conduct a seminar for financial services advisors in Panama or other places in South America. So I've reached out to people in, over there and I've told them by the end of this year, I'm going to be ready for a talk and I can share all my experience and everything else. You set up the talk, and I will learn Spanish. So that's my situation. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that is so cool. If you want to, Rick, so we can do some Geordie lessons if you want. Yeah, sure. What did he say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's really cool. That's a lot. I think I've, that's... I've just... Yeah, sorry. Um, I've just... 
re like reading your little um the emails that we've exchanged before this and then listen to that talk i've never thought of running as anything but running and it's interesting to see different sp like perspective when i go for a run for example i just go for a run and it's my switch off time and when i go for another person it's usually just going run next to a person as opposed to speaking to them i'm really bad for that like singular just do that's it's 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 a really interesting concept and I like the fact that it's organic as well. It's not it's not this predetermined thing. You just get the right people on a run with you and then see where it takes you. It's so cool. It's because you run too bloody fast, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody can keep up. You'd have to have a conversation with Kip Chogi. Oh, that would be amazing. I mean, I, I, I couldn't speak then, though. <laughs> Rob, can I just say though, uh, to your point, uh, there are certain activities where when I'm doing them, I want to be alone. I want to be with myself. I want to be in the zone. So for example, if I'm hitting a, a, a weightlifting session, if I'm doing deadlifts or squats or whatever, I usually have noise cancellation headphones on. I'm not talking to people. I'm in my, I may not be listening to anything, but it's just a way to tell people, don't disturb me. I'm just doing my thing. So it doesn't have to necessarily be running. Because there may be certain, or, or there may be some runs that you want to do on your own because you just need that time to process stuff or just need to focus on your run. But there could be other days when you're feeling more social. And if you take away the structure out of it, that if every run has to be this, if you take away that structure out of it, then, you know what I mean, when you feel like it, you do it. When you don't, you don't. Um, I remember on Jumeirah Beach Road, there's this, there are these uh, twin uh, Emirati uh, boys that run together. And they always, you see them, they're identical. They wear the same hats, the same uh, running gear, and they run together. And for the longest time, uh, all my interaction with them would be in the opposite direction. I would just wave out, and they would just, we just acknowledge that we've seen each other every day for the last three years. So wave out, wave out, go. But one of the days we ended up running in the same direction, <laughs> and uh, we spoke for a good 20 minutes. I mean, I said I was bad with accents. I understood most of what they said, but it was a great combination. <laughs> there was no structure behind it, but I felt like talking and they did too, and it was great. So. That's so it was, cool. It was in Spanish as well, which was helpful. <laughs> Lovely. Have we, got, have we got any more questions for Rickson? Does anybody want to ask him anything? Feel free to unmute yourself and put it to him. Has anyone had a networking run with anybody and taken something huge away from it? Rickson, what's the name of that app you were talking about? Abel. Which app? Oh, the, for the kids? Yeah. Uh, it's called Rooster. 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 Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Get that written down, Winter. Oh, there you go, look at that. No, either people don't want to talk or you've answered all their questions. Oh, here we go. So you come across Rickson as an extrovert. So do you advise, um, to, or how, what do you advise to people that are less extrovert and perhaps more introvert for something like this? It's, it's, uh, it's funny, I, I actually did a, one of these uh, personality tests and I actually showed up as an introvert. Uh, so the whole extrovert part of it is me forcing myself into situations where I have to be social, right? I think um, if you gave me a chance, maybe Marcus can attest to this. Uh, my first set of runs for MDS were alone in the desert and I welcomed them. There were seven, eight hours to myself. Uh, there was no group training with me at the time. And I really, really enjoyed being with myself. Um, but I think with everything, it's like, I think it may be uh, similar to telling somebody else who is not a runner about the benefits of running. You have to try it out. You've got to put yourself in that situation and put yourself out of your comfort zone for it to develop and evolve. Uh, when I first got into the life insurance business, I was forced to network. And, you know, these were those uh, organizations and these associations that met up in the evening for a drink where you wore a, a badge with your name and your industry. Mine said, Rickson, this was a life insurance. I had nobody who was willing to talk to me. 
I got stuck with the lawyer once, and there, there was just a conversation between the two of us, and everyone just avoided us like the plague. But my point is, I forced myself into those situations. I just realized over a period of time that that was not the ideal situation for me to network in. So if you find an activity that you feel like you're in your comfort zone, you're in your element, that this is what you do best, that may be a great place for you to network. It doesn't have to be in the traditional sense of it, you know, in a suit and, and pointed shoes. So, yeah. I think actually the perfect opportunity is, well, when it starts back up again, Track Tuesday is brilliant because everyone's there at one place, aren't they? You just talk to someone new every week, or even the coffee chats when, we come, when we're allowed to run again. Put yourself next to someone and just have a chat with them whilst you're running. That's the idea. Yeah. Here's, here's a question. Um, networking, running versus biking. What do you have? You done many networking on bikes, and do you notice a difference? Because I remember before I left London, people were talking about um, cycling as the new office and business as the new golf, basically. So I'm not in that space um, just yet, where I can ride comfortably in a group without having to worry about knocking into someone, right? So I tend to stay at the back of the group. And even when people talk, if you combine the fact that there are accents to deal with, the wind and me trying to not fall off, uh, it becomes difficult. But I will say that I've had some really great conversations. To give you an example, when I, when I did my first long ride, they had the Roy Nasser uh, Memorial Run and uh, Robert from our group basically ended up riding alongside me. And we spent about 35 to 40 minutes together, um, during which time he shared so many things with me that, uh, you know, it was one of my first rides and I was trying to still figure out things and how not to fall off the bike. He shared so many things with me over that 45 minute period, which was just amazing for me. So I didn't go looking for it. I was just trying to keep up with the group and not bang into anybody else or knock anybody else down. So biking for me, I'm not there yet. I think where I can ride in a group comfortably and uh, you know network and talk. I can do that while running. I can do that in so many other situations, but not yet at biking. Super interesting. Okay. I think your bike handling skills and your uh, appreciation for accents or <laughs> ability to, <laughs> to differentiate. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Me up there. Right. Cool. Uh, it's nearly five. More? I think that's all the questions are done. It's nearly five a.m. No, eight a.m. Eight a.m. Um, guys, if anyone feels like, I mean, these Thursday chats we've had Jenny talk, we've had Rickson. If anyone else feels that they've got something they want to contribute on one of the weeks, or they feel they want to share a story, just let us know. Um, we're more than open to hear people chat. It's better than us Thanks. talking every week. <laughs> I'm going to get of things to say. I'm, I'm just, I just, I just go silent after these chats now. But no, just no one around the house. No one understands what you say anyway. So we just that's just true. Keep a just lid nod. on that. <laughs> Smile away, boys. Smile away. Yeah. So if anyone, uh, yeah, if anyone does want to contribute anything, just let us know, and we can give you the mic, so to speak. Um, but huge thanks to Rickson for sharing there. I think that's, that's really useful. And I've definitely taken some things away from that, that I, well, first of all, I, I need to find someone to run with out here. Um, but I'll definitely increase my networking whenever we're back. And I like to run with people. Yeah, I think it's, uh, there's a lot of takeaways from that. And it's a really nice perspective to have as well. A different one. Superb. Thank you very much, Rickson. Thank you, Legend. Rickson. And uh, yeah, you all need yeah. to... Make sure and also spams Tom Walker today. It's yeah, his thirtieth yeah. birthday. Yeah. Big three zero. Big three zero. I think he's currently on the ski erg rowing a marathon. That's ski erg? Right. No. Mate, ski yeah. A marathon. Skiing a marathon. You yeah. Ski row a marathon? No. You, you ski. Know. You ski a marathon. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing something. He's, he's doing some sort of activity. Some yeah. sort of fitness. Lovely. Right, guys. Thank you very much for coming and have a lovely Thursday and weekend. Thank you very much, Rickson. Yeah,
Take care. Arrivederci. Doom, 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 doom. That, that was They're in Spanish. <laughs> that was Italian. What's goodbye in Spanish? Ciao. Ciao, bella. That's Italian, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jenny, what is it? You, you stopped recording, by the way. Oh, yeah. Stop, stop recording. Drum, stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's Italian.